What's up, everybody? Welcome to Cannabis Talk 101, Parts Unbaked. I'm Heidi Guirebill from Lorraine Oils. And with me today in the kitchen, I've got two VIPs from Truffley Made. We have Chef Michael, he's the consulting chef, and we have Chef and CEO Ian Dumanso. So today, we're going to be working with Lorraine's Gummy Mix, which is an awesome turnkey solution for any cannabis or non-cannabis business looking to produce delicious gummies very easily. And the Truffley Made Depositor that we're going to be working with makes that even easier. So Chef Michael, why don't you go ahead and take us through what you've gotten to through so far with our mix? Okay, well very simply, I have our water and then your pre-branched sugar mix. So I'm adding that in stages to the simmering water. And once I finish adding and it incorporates and it blends very well, then I'll add a little bit more until it's all incorporated and then I'll cook to temperature. Perfect. And in the meantime, I have the gelatin bloomed here. So I've taken the gelatin, I've poured that in the cold water so it can hydrate and bloom properly. And now I'm warming it up. So when the sugar solution is ready, I can combine the two and then we'll pour it in the machine for depositing, which by the way is hot. Awesome. Can you kind of go through the blooming process and explain the importance of that? Okay, so when it comes to gelatin, you have to properly hydrate the gelatin by adding it to cold water and then letting that cellular structure is like a sponge. So that wants to absorb the water and that's why you use cold water, you let that set and then you go and you remelt it for blendability. So blooming is really hydrating to its best capacity and that's what's going to give you the proper texture and mouth feel as well as setting the structure for your gelatin product. Perfect. And is there a difference between blooming gelatin in hot water versus cold water? Are there benefits to one or the other? Okay, so that's a good question. If you use hot water you may only melt the outside of your gelatin and still leave a core that you've cooked that hasn't hydrated properly because you've basically melted the outside but left a little bit of a center. So you, if you are gonna use hot water, you just have to really make sure that you've really melted it, that it's not seized sitting in the corner of the pot somewhere. Okay, and that'll make for a more fluid, more even candy. Well, you, would ha you wouldn't have a grainy candy. If you've got bits of fine gelatin, you're going to taste that in your final product. Okay, perfect. So our mix, again, it's unflavored, it's uncolored, so it makes it really easy to add your own infusion, whether you're doing a cannabis infusion or some other sort of vitamin infusion to it. Um, it makes it perfect for picking your own flavors. You don't have to have a bunch of different candy mixes to um, make a lot of different skews. It works with our super strength line, which is our most concentrated line. It's gonna give you a really nice, robust flavor. And there's over 100 flavors, so there's a lot of great options. They're all mixable, so you can make some really yeah. interesting combinations. Um, so our one good thing about our gummy mix too is it also uses high sweet, which is a powdered corn syrup. It works a lot better to um, divert humidity so your candy's not getting as sticky as quickly and it helps with cure time too. Um, generally we see about a six hour to an overnight cure time so it happens really fast and so it, your production scale can go much more quickly. Um, so we're going to take a short break right now but then we're going to come back and we're going to add the gelatin to the sugar mix and then we're going to flavor it and run it through the depositor. Yeah, this is Ian, CEO of Truffley Made. Come check out my episode with Cannabis Talk 101. You know, we'll make some uh, gummies together. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cannabis Talk 101, Parts Unbaked. I'm Heidi with Lorraine and with me is Truffley Made. Woo! First of all, who's going to that after party tonight? <laughs> Country Club, Fremont Street, be there at nine. 
So, Chef Michael, now we're at the cooking process. We bloomed the gelatin, we've got the sugars melted. What do we do next? All right, so I'm just finishing up right now, making sure the sugar in the water mix is completely melted. There's no lumps or pieces of sugar sitting in the corner anywhere. Uh, I just want to make sure that that part is okay. And then what I want to do is I'm going to take it off the stove so I can add the gelatin slowly so it doesn't foam and boil over. Okay. And then we'll add the flavor, and then we could talk about infusions or whatever. Perfect. So at what point in the process would you recommend adding the infusion? I always tell everybody we do that at the end. So after you combine your sugar syrup and your gelatin, you add your acid, your flavor, then you can come in with your infusion mix and then emulsify and then deposit. Okay. So it's really just another step in the process. Most people who are doing this, it's already pre-batched. They have the experience with it. So they know what they make, what they put together. They're putting that same amount in the recipe because it's going to give them the consistent dosage that they need for their market. Perfect. I love it. So you mentioned acids, which is the question that we get all the time. Um, a lot of our customers will call and say that as soon as they add an acid to their gummy, it starts to weep. Can you kind of talk us through that and what are some good troubleshooting shooting tips that you've got? Okay. So the first thing I do with everybody is acid is based on the percentage of the weight of the recipe. So everybody should go back to about one and a half percent or less in the full amount of your recipe. If you have too much recipe, you invert your gelatin and you'll cause a degradation of the gelatin. And yes, you can cause weeping and absorption of the sugar. It's also balance in the recipe. Adding acid may not be the full reason that the gummy is weeping. That sounds like excessive moisture, okay. or maybe it's not being cooked to a high enough temperature. Okay. And does the is the degradation that you mentioned the same for like tartaric acid, citric acid, malic acid, or? See, that's where people, citric acid is what's kind of used and kind of a standard. Fumaric and tutaric, those acids are used for other things in the field, but you still got to use a, a recommended percentage and go from there. Perfect. So anybody who's higher than one and a half percent and they say they got conversion or stickiness, that's usually the first thing I look at when I evaluate a recipe. Awesome, that's why you're the consulting chef. <laughs> so now that we're ready to add the flavor to the mix, um, so you're gonna go ahead and add the gelatin right into the sugars? Correct. And what's so, the safest way to do that? You said. All right, all right so I'm gonna cool it down here. Ideally, I would have a temperature I would get up below 200, around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And then I would slowly dribble in the gelatin to see how it's going to react. Because if you go and pour it in all at once, you're going to have a big foamy mess and it's going to boil over on the pot. Okay. So. Something that I noticed working with gelatin is that it, it gets foamy on the top. We can talk about more how that goes, how that works out in your deposit depositor in the next segment, but is there anything that you do to scrape off that, that top foam layer or do you leave it? All right, so gelatin comes, fr gelatin comes from animal bones and skins, so you're going to have that foam. So what you can do is just take a skimmer and push it to the side and just kind of skim that out and then just throw it away. That's Perfect, it. that's yeah. good. So what flavor are we going to throw into this? We're going to do watermelon today. That seems to be one of the more popular flavors. Yeah, absolutely. I think watermelon, lemonade, strawberry, raspberry, those are definitely our top sellers. And I think across the board, um, those tend to be the, the bigger hits for a lot of the big companies. Um, but the good thing about super strength flavors is they're fun to mix. We've got a huge variety of them. So it's fun to venture out. If you're looking for a way to stand out from a, another edible company, adding something like our cucumber serrano to the watermelon is going to help mix that up, make it a little bit spicy, give you something um, that no other company has. And that's a good way of playing around with flavors. I always do recommend a small test batch and then just take notes and then have your staff involved and then you just keep a record of that. So, you know, you may do raspberry three times to get it dialed in and so you remember how much you've added each and every time. You document that so you know. So if you're developing five different flavors, 
you may be making each batch three or four times. So you really got to organize yourself and have that so you can provide a tasting menu for your staff and maybe for your customers. That's great. So one of the um, the app or the options that you also offer at Truffley Made is consulting, right? So you do a lot of recipe consulting or recipe tweaking for cannabis companies. How can people reach out to you to get those services from you? Uh, everything. Ian, grab the mic. Check it out. Everything is on our website. Okay. And everything is also at info at truffley .com. Okay. And you could also stop by booth 52221, Perfect. where we'll be all week. And we can talk about any kind of <coughs> consulting or recipe needs, your help that so you may need, and things like that. You said booth 5221. Right. You can go see Truffley Made. You can go see more of their equipment. And if you're interested in their consulting services for recipe development, that's the place to go. So now we've got the sugars combined with the gelatin, and we're going to add the watermelon flavor. Correct. I'm going to rewarm slightly to keep it at a nice temperature to be the proper viscosity for the machine. Thank you. Perfect. And then I'm just going to whisk in the flavor. At this point, I would add my flavor, your citric acid solution, and then at this point as well, I could add your infusion. And then I would emulsify it with a small hand blender, percentage of lecithin. Okay. And then that's it as an, emulsifi as an emulsifier. So the lecithin helps keep that um, the infusion stay in suspension so everything is nice and blended? Emulsify, correct, Perfect. yes. So you, got, you can use soy for the, or, or you can use sunflower for the people who don't like soy, and you only need less than a quarter, less than a quarter percent of the recipe. Okay. And would lecithin work for both gelatin and pectin recipes, or do yes. you have to, okay. Yes. Good stuff. All right. We are ready to pour in the depositor, so we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to see how Truffley Made Equipment does the job. We're back with Cannabis Talk 101, Loran Oils and Truffley Made. Hello, MJ BizCon 2023. Let's pour some gummies. So CEO Chef Ian Dumanso is going to take us through how you pour the gummy mix into the hopper and how it works with incredible ease to produce a high amount of gummies in a little bit of time. Absolutely. So the first step, or the first thing I want to mention is the machine itself. So it is a, a dual zone heated, one heating system around the machine of the hopper and one around the pistons. So the machine is completely heated. Um, it stays hot up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which allow you to cook uh, gelatin gummies, pectin gummies, caramel, taffy, hard candy, and even non edible products such as wax candles, soap, and other lotions. So this isn't just for the food business. You can do a lot of crafting with this, too. That's incredible. So soap and candles? Yes, we do have clients, especially in Canada. I don't know. Canada is very popular for that. But we have several clients in Canada uh, using this depositor heated to do wax candles and soap. That's awesome. I'm ready to see this thing work. Are we uh, ready to pour? Yeah. Absolutely. So we turn All right. this off here. So the mix is now ready. You want me to pour or you want to pour? I'll do the camera. Right. So the mix is now ready. It's at the right temperature, has the right viscosity. The machine has been preheated for about 40, 45 minutes. And what temperature, what temperature does the hopper sit at? So today we're making a gelatin gummy. Uh, so we are working at lower temperature. The machine is currently set up at 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Preheated for about 35 minutes. So preheated for about 35 minutes Absolutely. and just a little over 200 degrees. Exactly. So now we're pouring the full candy mix. Did you put any sort of like um, spray coating on the inside of the hopper it's before you started pouring? It's not necessar necessary with this type of viscosity. As you can see, it's pretty fluid. But eventually, yes, if you do work with higher viscosity, such as caramel, hard candy, and taffy, you do require a little bit of cooking spray or MCT oil with, within the hopper, either smeared or um, uh, sprayed. 
So right now our mix is in the hopper, ready to go. The first step is to prime the pistons. So we're going to pull on the lever a few times and all the piston will start to deposit gently. Once all the pistons are depositing evenly, we're ready to go and start our mass production. So I see that there are um, several different pistons. Are there, is there a way of removing some of them to accommodate molds that have fewer cavities or cavities that are spaced out differently? Absolutely. So the machine comes with eight pistons, but it's totally removable. You can work uh, with as little as four pistons uh, spread out evenly on the slider bar. Uh, so yeah, you just remove the piston, you pop it out of the machine, and that will shut down this, this line. So you can work anywhere between four to eight pistons. Do you also sell the molds? Those are very nice. And do you do custom molds? Absolutely. So uh, we actually started with molds uh, about 12 years ago, manufacturing only molds, very high quality. Everything is engineered and uh, manufactured in Germany, uh, including the machines. So 12 years ago, we started with the molds, selling molds in this industry. And we arrived at the right time because that was the very beginning of the cannabis industry. So all the ma major manufacturer of edibles back then were using our molds to start with. And at some point we had some major requests for a depositor. That's when we went around the world uh, to find the factory that we have now in Germany. And that actually uh, make, the, make the, molds, uh, the molds and uh, the machine right now. So we're gonna go with another mold. Oh, you guys have to see this. We have special have, uh, custom cannabis talk 101 molds. Absolutely, especially specifically made for uh, cannabis talk, so it's very unique. So we do offer uh, many different uh, molds, including custom. Oh, it's going to be a little, there we go. So as you can see, it's nice and smooth. All right, so now we're primed, we're running from all pistons. Once the machine is primed and the hopper is at capacity, how many gummies can you produce in an hour? So we have different models of machine, but the one we're working with today is our six liter uh, model. It's one of the most popular, the manual version. This small machine comes with a six liter hopper as, as described, and you can make about three to 5,000 gummy per hour, eventually more. Um, with the 12 liter, which is double the capacity of the, the hopper, some clients are making up to 10,000 gummies an hour. And we have other systems, uh, semi-automatic and full automatic, which allow you to, to make up to 20,000 gummies hourly. Um, are we ready to hand some of these gummies out? Absolutely. We All right. Gummies. We don't have it. It'll take a little while for those to set up, but Chef Ian's got some magic going on so we Absolutely. can hand some of these out. And I'll get Kelly over here and Emily. Do you want to hand these out to the crowd so everybody can see what truffly machines can do? All right. We're going to deposit a few more molds just for fun. All right. And uh, don't forget to come see us today. We're here until Friday. We can't hear you. Booth number 5221. Uh, here at MGB Scan Las Vegas. Uh, don't forget about tonight after party. Yes. You know, it's Fremont it's Country fun. Club, booth 5221. Go get your depositing equipment and scale up your business. Thank you, Cannabis Talk 101 and Truffley Made. Thank you so much. Woo. Thank you.